Honesty is probably the biggest thing and the, one of the biggest issues I have when it comes to the provincial government. The Green Party is interested in doing things different, honestly, and also I've got three grandchildren. And if we don't start doing something for them right now, there's not going to be anything coming out of it. More people like Peter and Hannah in the legislature, it would be amazing. It would be respectful, it would be problem solving, it would get things done. And collaborating, because there's lots of good ideas in the legislature. It doesn't matter what party you are, but people aren't collaborating with it. And that's really important to me as a collaborative professional, that people figure out how to find solutions together. So it comes from the grassroots, from what I was hearing, but then I thought, yeah, I can help apply that in legislation. Very early on, I, I developed a very great respect for the wisdom of older people. And as my family's getting older and I see people around getting older, I'm, I'm seeing more and more it's, it's harder for them just to exist in the society that we're building, uh, a society that's getting a little out of control. Helping our seniors is incredibly important, absolutely important. You know, they, they helped us become who we are. Uh, so let's help them now too. So I wanted the Green Party to have a representative that represented the average persons and their concerns. Because social justice to me it means fairness for everybody. And we don't really have that anymore. So I think that you know the things that really touched me and got me interested in the Green Party was the guaranteed income. So the Green Party is the only one party right now that has the political will and even puts it in, in their campaign saying, hey, look, we, we want to work towards getting you this. One of the stories that I keep drawing on over the last um, couple of days is a woman who has said to me that she will vote green because she's listening to her children. And that to me is powerful because if you are listening, you actually hear what people want. We need to align to that, we need to follow that, and we need to be true to our islanders, and so we need to listen to them. Because we need to leave something better for our kids. That's important. So ultimately what I want for my children is to have access to a lot of opportunities, and for them to know that they can pretty much achieve anything. But I also want them to have a childhood, um, and I think that having a childhood means playing outdoors, being able to go down the street and run into your, your friends, being able to ride your bike on the sidewalk, not having to worry about global issues that really adults should just handle. So I don't want my children to have to grow up in a place where perhaps environmental or ecological resources weren't managed properly. Our children have access to incredible amounts of educational resources, whether that's in our grade school system or online or even at the library these days. So the best and brightest really have a choice to go anywhere in the world to live and work. And that's what our children are going to want. So is Prince Edward Island going to be a place where the best and brightest want to live in the future? I sure hope so. Most of the money that comes in through corporate, you know, leaves the community. But if you could form some sort of a cooperative with your community members to work together, then that money's going to stay in the local economy. So I feel like, especially in rural areas, we have so much potential that's untapped and it's not realized, I think, by the government. So I feel that reinvesting in our, our go-to industries is important, but also allowing young entrepreneurs that want to move to rural areas, that have great ideas, that want to start a family to ensure that like your schools are there, your community health hubs are there. You know, the things that are necessary to ensure that your area, your community is, is going to grow. It shouldn't feel like in order to have a voice in, in civil politics, it feels like going to get my teeth pulled. I have worked very, very hard to kind of reduce my waste and my consumption. I do weekly cleanups uh, at the beaches within my district and I have for the last few months and just the amount of trash that I'm finding has really kind of encouraged me to reduce my consumption and my kind of single-use items and things like that. That kind of initially brought me to the Green Party and then I found out that the Green Party is so much more. The Green Party is about community and about people and they're, they're very passionate about open and honest communication and transparency. 
which to me is what the government should be. It should be transparent. I feel like this is an opportunity to make a difference. Having purpose and drive in your life and, and having passions and sort of having a goal, I think allows you to fill those needs as you need in order to accomplish the goal. So being passionate about things in the community like music, like cycling, uh, like teaching, which is, I would say, it's a way of planting seeds that our future generations will be able to, to reap the harvest. If you don't care who gets the credit, and if, if you want to, to give credit where credit is due, it allows you to work with other people of all parties, and um, yeah, that's what this is about for me. It feels so good to be able to put myself out there and genuinely try to help. My goal is to serve my community because I love, I love this community. It's hard not to fall in love the second that you, that you step foot on this island. And since then I knew that I wanted this to be my home. And it is, this is where I raise my kids, it's where I've gone to school, it's where I work, and it's where I fell in love. I want to see my kids grow up and experience the Prince Edward Island that I've always known that it was. Without me knowing it, there was a natural path of my life experiences, being a professional salesperson and a computer engineer and the traveling and, the, and all of those things and raising my daughter and living here and running businesses and then running the non-profit. All those things come together to, to give you the right tools to say um, when you step into public service, into the capacity that that I have and that we're asking others to do. When you step into that space, you're doing so because you know that you're taking that step to say, I am prepared to do something about that. Something just started to change. When I started doing some things um, with the Green Party and getting involved and meeting the community of people, I suddenly could see myself in this role that I had never even considered before. The group of people that I've met that are committed to this sustainable change, not just, you know, let's just get in there and see what we can do, but, but to really look at things that go beyond the election cycle, that things with vision that we can work towards and actually make some sustainable changes. I fell in love with PEI, not only the, the beautiful landscape in the rural areas, but also the the intimacy of the cities like Charlottetown or small places like Victoria. I see that fitting in perfectly with a sustainable living. Green housing, buildings, all should fit into a really nice landscape. It's not a, just a single building. It all fits into the environment. There isn't enough just that the building saves energy. It's a question of the whole thing. It seems like the legislature is where changes have to be made. You know. Not, a, not enough just to build a nice building, although that helps, you have to get the whole framework right. I've been a carpenter for the past 40 odd years. I always thought that you had to be a lawyer, you had to be a doctor or a teacher to become a political leader. And I, I got to thinking, no, no, I met Peter. I saw a news program that he had a sign ran over. I had to get in the car and go see this gentleman. And uh, I hate bullying. And I felt that's what it was. I said, uh, is there anything I can do to help you with your campaign? And that's kind of where it started. And then I, then I realized the Green Party was me. It was me. And so for me, youth and working with animals in the rural landscape of PEI was, were driving motivators for me coming back home in 2008. After seeing my business torn down and then trying to relocate that, it wasn't just about relocating my home and my business, it was finding a place for youth again in the community and taking all of those, those core values with us and moving them further. I think running in this in this respect is, is a continuation of that, it's an evolution of that. Can, can I represent people in my community at a greater scale and make a bigger difference in my community? You know, when Hannah got elected and Islanders went, oh, so that wasn't just a one-off blip, you know, this is something different. That was really the takeoff point for us, I think, and to be sitting here on the verge of an election 
as a government in waiting, a potential government in waiting, uh, with a number of really strong candidates from tip to tip, a platform that I am unbelievably proud of, and an organization that can carry us through an election like a real grown-up party. To have done that, all of those things in the short time frame that we have uh, is perhaps one of the things I'm most proud of in my whole life, actually. Something I really like about the Green Party's approach is um, their commitment to transparent, participatory democracy and getting communities involved with that. I think too often, especially our rural communities, uh, don't have a chance to really help shape government policy in their, that, that represents them the best. I really believe in strong, vibrant local communities and I think I can take that passion that I have for these subjects and, um, and also my knowledge of them and, and use those to help um, shape better government policy that will create stronger, more vibrant and more resilient local communities. I found that as I got older, my values started to diverge from what I would see as the traditional parties and I started to see an alignment with my values with the Green Party. I really enjoy meeting with people. Uh, in my job, uh, in the practice of law, I meet with lots of people every day and uh, for 16 years of practice I have met a lot of people and I've met a lot of people with a lot of problems uh, that needed to be fixed. So in, uh, as a lawyer, uh, most of what I enjoyed the most in my practice is meeting new people, uh, hearing their stories, hearing what's important to them and being in a position where I can help fix their problems. I went down the checklist, everything the Green Party of PEI stands for, I endorse and I stand for as well. I have to compromise or change nothing to run for the Green Party. And what I found was I'm not happy with the way the island is going. And when you're presented an opportunity to make a change, you have to run with that opportunity. And the Greens, I feel, offer the best future for Prince Edward Island. We see such an array of small businesses in Summerside that are incredible. They really contribute to the quality of place. It's why people want to live there. We have to recognize that we're on a collision course for climate catastrophe if we don't rethink the way we imagine our communities. I am passionate about how that fits with Summerside. Well, what makes me unique, it almost always ties back to energy in some way, shape or form because it's been my passion for so long here now. Summerside in particular is very well positioned to be a leader in that uh, regard, even amongst Prince Edward Island. And then Prince Edward Island, by extension, can uh, follow Summerside's lead. So uh, there's some really exciting things going on in Summerside right now. We could do even more if they had some partnership and uh, support coming from the province. So. Summerside wants to do some amazing things and if they had the support of an, uh, an MLA that understood the industry you know, there to support them, I, I think we could do really amazing things. And for the first time when I saw what the Green Party was doing and what Peter Bevan Baker uh, was presenting in the legislature, I started to believe that politics was really a place where we could make positive change. It means putting in a lot of work. Uh, but for me, that's not something I'm afraid of. I've always worked very hard. I've worked hard for everything that I've done in my life. As an MLA for District 23, I would work hard every day to continue to make those connections. The values of the party are, are, are sound, are grounded, and they're, they're long-term values that kind of any Islander can relate. And I could relate to those party values, and I was interested in politics kind of ever since 2015 and this year I, I decided well you know um, I think I'm good to, to make a go of it. The passions I have towards the party are, are so in line with so many other rural islanders it's just the desire to really create a sustainable home that we're not going to deplete and we can basically keep it going on generation upon generation as had been done for countless family generations before this point. I'm looking to be able to represent all the unique voices in my community while I serve in Charlottetown. The Green Party, I believe, is the party best positioned to protect our natural resources moving forward, especially our water. I believe that our water, our drinking water, is 
under threat by corporate interests. And if we lose our drinking water, we lose everything else that we hold dear here on Prince Edward Island. We cannot allow that to happen. And Peter Bevan Baker and the Green Party are the best people to protect that vital interest. I think one of my biggest passions is just helping people. Um, that's why I chose teaching as a profession. Uh, so I help people on a daily basis in that regard, but I've been a, I've been a volunteer in many capacities in, in the district um, on different boards and with uh, various initiatives in the area. And even with the, the business that I formed, Tignish Dinner Theatre Inc., we didn't form it to make money because you don't make a lot of money <laughs> as an actor in rural PEI, but we formed it to make people laugh, to give a little service back to the community. So. Um, just helping people is one big thing and uh, hard work. I'm passionate about hard work as well. I'm teaching, I'm working on my masters and running a small business in rural PEI. So.